it's sometimes quite tricky to decide whether price differences are the result of price discrimination or not. This is a very pleasant hotel room in the middle of Sweden. One of a number of rooms in this particular place. And it's very nice and it's very pleasant. Now being Sweden, it's not cheap. The hotelier has high costs, particularly social security costs and so on. These costs have to be covered and so you expect to pay a reasonably high price to stay in a Swedish hotel like this. But some rooms with exactly the same facilities and exactly the same size are charged more than other rooms. Let me show you why. So if the hotelier charges more for a room with a view like this, would we call this price discrimination? There are two reasons why we shouldn't really call this price discrimination. The first reason is probably more obvious than the second. The first reason is, of course, that this is in fact a different product in the sense that part of what you're paying for is the ambience of the place and if you've got a room like this, you've got a view which others haven't got. It's very pleasant, very nice view to look at in the morning. So you're actually paying for a superior product. You're paying more for a product which is in some sense better than a room which is identical in every other way which doesn't have the view. But there's a second, perhaps less obvious reason for saying that it isn't really price discrimination. And that is that actually it costs the hotelier more to provide. Now it may not seem obvious because you may feel, well, the hotelier has built a number of rooms and if the number of rooms they've built have all got the same facilities and so on, then the cost of building this room is no higher than the cost of building another room around the corner without the view. Actually that wouldn't quite be correct. The hotelier has had to pay more to acquire the site because of this lovely view. It's cost more, if he's borrowed the money, he's got higher costs of repayments to the bank and so on. So we could say that in an opportunity cost sense, this room costs the hotelier more to provide. And remember that a key idea about price discrimination is that you are charging different prices for something which costs the same to provide. If there are different cost centers, then the difference in prices are not price discrimination. So we've got two reasons for saying it's not price discrimination. It's a different product, but it also costs the hotelier a different amount to provide the superior room. Similarly, with the Orison Bridge, there was a difference in the price charged between motorcycles and cars. That difference is not price discrimination because what's being sold is a different product. The car carries more people and results in higher wear and tear on the bridge than a motorcycle. In these examples, firms charge different prices for different products. Another reason why firms commonly charge more for a product in two markets is where demand is different. Here we simply mean the amount of product demanded and not elasticity of demand as mentioned earlier. Changes in demand can lead to different prices for the same product. This is often called peak load pricing. Here we are in Copenhagen, one of the windiest parts of Europe Hence an ideal spot for putting wind turbines to produce energy. Wind energy is very attractive because it's non-polluting. However, wind power has a very different cost structure when compared with coal, oil and gas. Wind power generators are very expensive to build. They have high capital costs. The marginal cost of running is very low. Therefore, the marginal cost of providing electricity in Denmark at three in the morning on a warm and windy day is very low. Few people are using electricity 
and there's a surplus of wind power. So what happens when all the wind power is being used? We now need to use relatively expensive oil and gas. So the marginal cost of boiling the kettle at a time when demand is low and the wind is blowing is going to be much less than the cost of boiling the kettle when there is a period of peak demand. Periods of low demand, utilities rely on wind power, solar power and coal-fired power plants to meet demand. These are low marginal cost sources. But when demand is high, utilities begin burning oil and gas, which has a much higher marginal cost. Therefore, some utilities charge their customers more for electricity at peak periods of high demand. This difference in price for a kilowatt of electricity isn't price discrimination because it reflects differences in production costs due to increased demand. It doesn't reflect differences in demand elasticity. This is the nature of peak load pricing. Firms with high capital costs, such as electricity utilities, face a capital constraint and a marginal cost curve like this. Using existing capital, the marginal cost is low until the capital constraint is reached. At this point, the marginal cost becomes vertical, showing that the next unit of production can only be produced at enormous cost with new capital. D1 is the demand curve off-peak. D2 is the demand curve at the peak. The profit maximizing price off peak is given as P1. The profit maximizing price at peak time is P2, limiting the quantity demanded to Q2. The difference in price is not price discrimination because it doesn't reflect differences in demand elasticities. It reflects differences in the amount of demand. You can say the same thing about travelling on a train. It costs much more for the railway company to provide a journey going into a major station at 9 o'clock in the morning. They need extra capital equipment to take extra passengers. Marginal cost is high. Taking an extra passenger at 2 o'clock in the afternoon does not require extra capital costs. It's already there. The marginal cost is very low. So charging different prices for journeys at different times of the day isn't really price discrimination. Charging different prices to different customers for the same rail journey at the same time of day is price discrimination. <laughs>